We currently have a comet hanging around. Let's work out how to photograph it. First, we have to find it. I use the web version of Stellarium for this. And finding the comet was a little tricky, but I got there in the end. As you can see, for the current date and my location of Palmerston North, not great. The moon is up. Comet's not up for very long. Probably end up being quite washed out. So let's pick a different date. Maybe the weekend. I work during the week. Weekend's good. Let's see what it looks like on the weekend. Oh, interesting. It's right by Mars. That looks like it could make an interesting photograph. And we have a narrow window of time before the moon comes up. The comet is a bit higher in the sky and it's nice and dark. Okay, I think we have a plan. We will photograph the comet on the weekend, either Friday or Saturday night. So let's talk about the gear we need. It's going to be four pieces of gear. Start with the camera. I'm using a Sony a7 II and I'm using the Tamron 70 to 180 f2.8 lens. The lens is probably the most expensive bit of kit here. This is budget astrophotography. This is still a little pricey, but I mean, it's all relative. Astrophotography goes from a couple of grand generally up to an insane amount of money. All right, I'm just using a standard everyday photography tripod. It's possibly a little lightweight for this, but I can make it work. And it's what I have. I'm going to use a simple remote shutter. Uh, the vellum meter is probably a better option, but for what I'm going to do, this will work fine. And lastly, I need a star tracker. So I'm going to use the Star Adventurer. It's a relatively entry level star tracker. There are a couple of cheaper options. This can handle a little bit more payload for the longer lens. So that's, that's good. Um, and it's just there to help track the night sky. So the rotation of the earth doesn't cause star trailing in the image. So that's it. Four pieces of gear. Um, relatively cheap as far as deep space astrophotography goes. Okay, we set up the tracker in the backyard to show you what it looks like. We have a counterweight on to balance out the camera. The tracker is nice and level. These are fairly key to getting a, a good track of the night sky. Because I'm in the southern hemisphere, I've got this set to S. Northern hemisphere, of course, you'd have it to N. You need to polar and align the tracker by pointing it south. You can use the built-in guide scope, but the stars down here are so faint that I just use a very rough trial and error approach. Okay, set this tracker to star tracking mode and we're good to go. Okay, we made it to Hamatangi Beach Friday night. Lovely dark skies I've set up and we're going to be shooting at f2.8 30 second exposures and ISO 1600, which is a great baseline starting point. You can adjust it as needed if you've got light pollution or other things going on. And it's going to take me a little while here to figure this out, but I've actually made a big mistake. Can you spot it? Okay, congratulations if you figured out that I have both the star tracker and the camera pointing north. I should have the star tracker pointing south. I'm going to blame that mistake on a hectic work week. It did take me an embarrassing long time to figure out what was going wrong though.
Okay. We've set up. We're shooting. And I've just, I've locked the, the trigger. So it's just uh, put the camera in burst mode. It's just going to take 30 second exposures and off we go. Okay, after we've taken the images, we need to process them. So first I want to show you these test images I took while I was setting up. So now you can sort of see we had a bit of camera shake and we have some trailing. These are things you want to look out for on the night when you're shooting. But once we've got everything dialed in, the images look a lot better. We do have a little bit of cloud cover. You can see Mars and the comet. So that's pretty good. At this point, the only corrections I've made in Lightroom are to remove chromatic aberrations and to do lens correction. I want to stack some images. So I've gone through and had a look at these and I've picked six images where they're taking pretty close together. So the comet's going to be in roughly the same spot. And the cloud cover issues we were having on the night were not impacting Mars or the comet, which are the two key points of interest in the photo. So we're going to export those. We're going to export them as uh, TIFF files. We're just going to call these lights and put in a subfolder. We're going to try and stack these to see if we can get a better quality image. Okay, those have exported. And at the end of the night of shooting, I put the lens cap on and I took a bunch of images using the same exposure settings. We call all this darks. So these are dark frames. And I've applied the same lens correction and chromatic aberration. These are just really to remove hot pixels and other types of noise. Okay, we're going to stack in sequitur. It's more for landscape astrophotography as opposed to deep space astrophotography, which is what this is, but it's easy to use. It's free. So that's what we're going to use. All right, loaded up darks, lights, setting the output file. I'm just going to call it stacked. We're going to go in and tell it to use, um, tell it to select best pixels. We have some issues in the in the image files there. Got a lot here. Occasional line of things passing by, clouds. And we're gonna remove dynamic noises. I think we're about ready to go. And we're off. Click close and we'll show the staked image. Looking good. Let's go to Photoshop and see if we can get it looking better. In Photoshop, duplicate the background layer so that we don't destroy the image while we're editing it. And I'm going to stretch it by going to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. So we're going to move this here, that there. Essentially, we're just trying to stretch out the histogram a bit. Try and bring out a little bit more detail in the comet, especially in the comet's tail. We can do that a couple of different times. Try not to crush the blacks too badly. But as we do that, we can see we have a lot of weird stuff happening due to the clouds that were you know, causing problems on the night. But we have brought out more detail in the comet. So that's pretty cool. Now, there is a way we can fix this. Um, I learned this from a YouTube video from Nebula Photos. Great astrophotography channel. So we're going to duplicate this layer. We're going to call it Background Cleanup. Then we're going to select all. Copy.
we're going to go file new uh, basically create a new one from the clipboard and then paste now we're going to use the basically the dust and scratches filter to clean this up you can play with the settings a little bit here but i mean 40 is probably going to be fine for what we want to do so we'll go with 40. so this has essentially removed all the stars as it's treating them as dust or scratches we still have a little bit of Mars and a little bit of the comet there. So we're going to use uh, one of my, we're going to use one of Photoshop's cleanup tools. And we're going to just sort of content, are we remove those? do this a couple of times until it, it looks like we've pretty much got it all there's a little bright star over there that didn't get removed so we'll get that as well now we'll go back to the original image we'll unselect and then we will apply image we will pick the uh, copy we created and we will subtract you can use this to get rid of light pollution as well in your image it's a very very powerful little trick we're going to play with the, the settings here a bit until we get it sort of dark but not but not completely crushed all the blacks and this isn't actually looking too bad we cleaned it up a fair bit now. We've got some weird stuff down the bottom where there's not stars where there should be due to the clouds. But overall, it's looking a lot better than it did. You can save your working if you want, just to make sure that you're you know, not losing anything. And you can go back to this point where the image is actually looking reasonable. We could try and stretch this a bit more, but we we only stacked six images, 30 seconds exposure. That's only three minutes total total integration time. So I'm not sure how far we can push this. But we'll give it a try and see what happens. So stretch it a bit more. Uh, if we zoom in and take a look, I suspect we might have pushed things a little too far. So yeah, that looks quite noisy. I think it looked better before we stretched it. So we'll get rid of that. And we'll just be happy with what we had. At this point in time, you could do your final touch-up in Photoshop or in Lightroom. I actually prefer the interface in Lightroom, so I'm just going to do it there. So I'll export this as a TIFF file once more. And then we'll go into Lightroom and just tweak things around slightly. So here we are back in Lightroom. You can see I've, I've tweaked some of the, the Lightroom settings around a little bit. This is all just personal preference. Um, I'd suggest not pushing it too far. And one of the last things we want to do is crop it. Because I want to put this into a video, I'm going to crop it at 16 by 9. And I want to try and remove some of those weird looking spots down the bottom where the clouds cause there to be um, sort of an absence of stars. Just play around with this slightly. 
I don't want that. I want the comet reasonably in frame, not not too close to the edge. The more you crop, the more resolution you lose. So it's always a trade-off. All right, let's put the comet on the third line. And I think that looks pretty good. So we'll just go with that. There you go, we have Mars and the comet, both in the same image. Not too bad. Probably not the best quality astro photography image of a comet ever, but you know, look just looking for something to throw up on Facebook and have your friends go, wow, he managed to take a photo of a comet then this kind of approach works well.